Hey, you guys. Welcome back to Reserved Investments on YouTube. And I have good news and I have bad news. The bad news is it's one o'clock in the morning and I can't sleep. The good news is if you like my content, you get another video as a result. So make no mistake, this will be uploaded to YouTube within 24 to 48 hours. And you'll have something new to watch that came courtesy of Reserved Investments simply because he suffers from insomnia. Now, let's get to the crux of this video. You know, we talk an awful lot on this channel about third-party grading. And some of you love third-party grading. Some of you hate third-party grading. Me, I have a neutral stance. In certain markets that I operate in, third-party grading has been a boom. I love third-party grading and the companies that serve those markets that I operate in. That doesn't mean there are not any problems, there are not any consequences of third-party grading companies operating in that market. Meaning, I'm not stating that all third-party grading companies are good, Certain third-party grading companies are evil. That is not the point I'm trying to make. There's both pros and cons to each third-party grading company out there that is well-known, that is credible. And you need to look at it more through the lens of gray rather than black or white. And there's a lot of people that come into the comment section of my videos and they say, hey, third-party grading is awesome or third-party grading is evil. My answer, from my perspective, is it's actually somewhere in the middle. It's not always good, and it's not always bad. It's not always bad, and it's not always good. It really depends on the circumstance. It depends on the market. It depends how investors, collectors, auction companies, and even casual enthusiasts view that market at that particular time. It also matters a lot on the ethics and transparency of the third-party grading company in question. Obviously, as we know, Certain third-party grading companies have better ethics and transparency than others. In the year 2022, I can tell you with the boom in collectible prices, a lot of third-party grading companies can afford to do better. A lot of third-party grading companies are just putting the minimal effort into what they're doing just because the market's going to support them regardless due to all the money that's flowing in the trade. Now, to prove this point, and to get you thinking in a different way. I have four collectibles, I use the term loosely, on the table in front of me. I am gonna hold up a collectible and I pretty much can guarantee that every item I'm gonna hold up in this particular video, there is a third party grading company that will happily grade and encapsulate the item in question. You're gonna see where I'm going with this video. So the first item I'm gonna hold up is a 1964 silver US Washington head quarter. This obviously is worth more than 25 cents simply because this particular item is made out of 90% silver content. This is a 1964 Washington head quarter. Now, to be fair, if I were to try to grade this particular piece, it would be AU58, meaning it would not be a min state quarter. However, if I was dumb enough or naive enough, or I just had an emotional attachment to this item and I wanted to send it to NGC to get graded, or I wanted to send it to PCGS, two top tier companies in the trade, to grade this particular piece, let me ask you something. Is it their job to contact me back and say, you know, Sean, you're sending in this 1964 Washington quarter and why it is 90% silver, meaning it's worth more than 25 cents, the face value is more, it is not really a collectible piece. The grading fees are going to cost more than what this particular coin is worth. And if this coin does, heaven forbid, get encapsulated and come back AU58, if I go to list it on eBay, it's probably not going to sell for a significant premium over the grading fees that I paid. Is it really NGC's or PCGS's responsibility to contact me and tell me that? You don't need to answer. We're going to go to the next collectible in question. So for those unaware, this is Lance's Charizard. Uh, this is a Pokemon Celebration 10. If I crack this open, I opened up the packs and I sent all the cards to either PSA or BGS or even CGC. And I asked them to grade it and I was willing to pay the fee. I was willing to wait the six months or the year to get my cards back. Is it really their responsibility to reach out to me and say, hey, Sean, you know, you're asking us to grade modern era Pokemon cards. And a lot of the cards that you sent in, they're going to come back in nine condition. There's not any tens here. Is it really their responsibility 
to reach out to me and say, you know what, as a result, we don't think you should grade this item. Now, before you answer, I got a couple more examples here. I have this wonderful, all you guys who collect Lego, you know this. This was the May 4th exclusive. This is the Lars Family Homestead Kitchen Limited May 4th, 2022 Lego exclusive. Now, this item obviously was produced with mass produced scarcity. Lego didn't sell this at retail. This was a giveaway so that you would spend X number of dollars at Lego at the retail location or online shopping for Star Wars items on May 4th during the May 4th, 2022 promotion. Now, make no mistake, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are flipping these on eBay right now for a significant profit. I probably will do the same. I have several of these. But if I wanted to stupidly send this particular piece to AFA, Action Figure Authority, is it AFA's responsibility to contact me via phone or email and say, you know what, before we cash your check, Sean, we want you to know that you're probably not making a good use of your dollars by grading this particular Lego set at present time. Now, to be fair, maybe in another five years, hell, maybe in another few years, people start to pay a premium for this. And because it does have a limited edition minifigure in it, it is worth getting graded. But right now, it is not worth getting graded. I can simply take this particular item, flip it on eBay, and sell it for a significant premium as it is. But again, here's the question. Is it AFA's job to reach out to me and tell me, hey, Sean, it's not a good idea to grade this item? Don't answer yet, because we got one more collectible that I want to show you guys. This is the House of Fata Morgana. I know I probably butchered the name. I'm sorry. You guys know I'm horrible with any names. I'm horrible with video game names. For the record, this is factory sealed. This was released by Limited Run in limited quantity, mass-produced scarcity for the Nintendo Switch. And if you never played this game, full disclosure, this game is fucking incredible. This game is a solid 10. Um, you can download it if you didn't want to buy the original physical copy. I will tell you, though, this is worth playing at least once. It is a visual novel. Some of you guys out there probably will not like this game. Now, if I sent this particular game to VGA, Video Game Authority, they would happily encapsulate it. Matter of fact, they would cash my check, they would charge my credit card, they would contact me back and say, thank you, Sean, for sending us this item. Your item's going into grading. You'll have it back probably three years from now. Yes, I'm over-exaggerating, but let's make no mistake. All these grading companies are backed up. Is it VGA's responsibility to tell me, hey, you know, you could easily flip this on eBay right now and you're gonna get more than what you paid to buy it on limited run at the time of its release. So you really don't need to grade it. You can easily just list it on eBay and you're gonna make a profit. Now, where am I going with this? Well, some people on YouTube, on collecting forums, are attacking Wada Games right now because Wada Games is considering grading modern era games like this. But yet, VGA also grades modern era video games and nobody's really saying anything. Um, NGC and PCGS are two top tier coin grading companies and they'll grade this 1964 quarter, even though it's not worth grading. AFA, which is owned incidentally by VGA, parent company owns both, will grade this Lego set. Nobody's really screaming foul to that. Nobody's screaming foul to the fact that, oh my God, Pokemon collectors, I can send these cards into PSA, BGS, or CGC to get graded at present time. And I don't see any discussions on E4 where, you know, why is PSA, why is Beckett, why is CGC grading modern era Pokemon cards? But heaven forbid, of Games decides to possibly test the market for grading and encapsulating modern era video games and people make videos against them. Now, I'm no fan of Wattic Games. I mean, you guys know that, right? I was in the Carl Jopes video. I've done videos on this channel about alleged market manipulation, telling you guys that the whole market is speculative, that you got to be cautious of that market. But at the end of the day, is it really my responsibility or Wattic Games' responsibility to tell somebody that, hey, 
you, you can't send in your house in Fata Morgana for the Nintendo Switch or heaven forbid Super Mario 3D All-Stars because we all know it's rare. Wink, wink, sarcasm implied. Is it really the grading company's job to do that? Or is it up to the individual collector and or investor and or speculator to realize that these particular items are extremely speculative and given the fact that an item like this even though it is mass produced in limited quantities just came out there's probably a ton of these out there that are in factory sealed mint condition so most likely it is not worth sending this particular item to get graded at present time however it is not your job to patrol the market. It is not my job to patrol the market. It is not Wada Games' job to patrol the market. It is not AFA's job to patrol the market. It is not the coin grading company's job to patrol the market. It is not PSA, Beckett, CGC's job to patrol the market. You guys all want an unregulated market when prices are rising, right? You wanna take claim, you wanna believe that you went into this market you risked the capital, and now you're getting the just reward. That's what you want. You want all these markets to remain unregulated and completely free. But then, if we're going to do that, guys, let's go all the way. Why can't Wada Games grade modern era video games just like VGA already does? And chances are, when G CGC starts grading video games, they're probably going to grade modern era games as well because there's a lot of money in that market. If you send an off the rack, modern era copy of the latest Batman issue to CGC right now, their comic grading division, they're gonna encapsulate it and grade it for you. So why is everybody upset right now on a lot of these collecting channels, on a lot of these collecting forums, simply because Wada Games might start grading factory sealed modern era video games. Look, I'm no fan of Wada Games, but I gotta defend them here. This is completely ridiculous. You guys need to understand, it is not any one company's or person's job to be the gatekeeper of what Timmy, Kimmy, and Poindexter Jr. choose to do with their hard earned money or what they choose to grade. Now, I have been criticized by a lot of these communities, most specifically the Pokemon community, for coming on this channel and trying to teach the basics of the antiques and collectibles trade, which is what I do in an honest and ethical fashion. With that being said though, I gotta state, Wada Games isn't doing anything wrong here because VGA's been doing it since day one. All these grading companies, they will grade modern era collectibles, guys. Live with it, learn to accept it, learn to understand the market dynamic, and in an upcoming video, I'm gonna be talking about this, hint, hint, learn to profit from it. Because I guarantee you, there is somebody out there that's watching this video right now that goes, you know what, Sean? If that house, uh, I'm sorry, house in, not of, Fata Morgana would come back from VGA in 95 condition, they would probably pay me a significant premium for this item. Because if you go back and you watch this channel from its origins, you'll see I once had a lot of modern era pop culture collectibles on this table that were graded by VGA. I've sold most of them for a significant premium. And a lot of that stuff literally came out within the last five years of that video being recorded. People were paying me hundreds of dollars, if not in certain cases, thousands of dollars premiums to own those particular items. Really hate to say it, I'm a consultant. I'm in the antiques and collectibles trade. I'm also very ethical. All is what it would have took if one of those particular potential buyers would have reached out to me and said, Sean, I don't think this is worth what you're charging for it. Do you think I should buy it as an investment? I would have told them no. They chose not to do that. They went on eBay, they clicked to buy it now, they gave me the money, I sent them the product. What's the harm and foul? It's an unregulated market. I have no idea why they're buying it. For all I know, they could just buy it because they like it. They're not trying to invest in it. So I am not gonna criticize WADA over this and I would encourage all of you out there, on this one instance, let's give WADA a pass. They're not doing anything wrong because every other grading company is already grading modern shit to the moon to the point where they're backed up X number of months, X number of years, where people cannot get their crap back in the estimated time frame stated. So let's let WADA go on this one thing. 
If they want to grade this particular copy of this Nintendo Switch game that I have, let them. Let little Timmy Kimmy or Poindexter Jr. pay his premium to get his game so that he can learn the real way these markets operate over the short term and over the long term. That's all I have. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I hope, at least at 1 o'clock in the morning here, you got something out of this video and are able to think in a new way, in an open mind. Thanks, guys.